But before the video, a quick message from Reg to say like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. What is up to you? It is Crypto Anime today. I am going to be discussing which character among the several introduced in Goblin Slayer is the strongest. With a new movie coming out, I thought it would be a solid time to rate these young men and women of the cheerful world of Goblin Slayer. So I'm going to be putting these characters in ranking to each other, not to characters like Goku or Saitama. Obviously, Goblin Slayer can take them both with his hands tied behind his back. I feel the need to say that, that was a joke. It's a joke. So, moving on. I guess I can just use a tier system to kind of make it easier on myself and easier for you guys to understand. And if you want to just skip to the end to see the results, I'm not going to stop you. I'll write them either A, B, C, or trash. So, I guess I'll just get started and hop right into it. I'm going to start with the Priestess. Obviously, she's no kilowatt or anything. She is a porcelain-ranked adventurer, which I believe is the lowest, with the Adventurer's Guild, and she's basically no fighting ability whatsoever, and relies entirely on Goblin Slayer to basically carry her throughout the entire show. But she has these things called Miracles, which are spells like a support, and I get that you need a support in every group. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on supports, but as a standalone, I don't think she could really accomplish anything. She'd probably get wrecked by, like, one goblin. She just needs a group to carry her, and clearly she's not trash, but I'm gonna just place her in C due to the fact that the whole 1v1 thing would result in her having a manga that had to be wrapped in plastic. So on to the Archer. She's a silver ranked adventurer with the Adventurer's Guild, so she's higher up there. She's a bit of a comedic relief as a part of the group which you well needed in the world like Goblin Slayer. She's kind of like the dwarf in that sense with the whole comedic thing. She's very skilled, and she held up her own for a solid time in the whole sewer situation. She fights until the end and always has her allies' backs. She could 100% hold her own in a fight with a strategic mind, a strategic fighting spirit, and one hell of a solid appearance, if I do say so myself. I think she is eons above the priestess women. Like... It's not even comparable, so she's going right to B. Obviously, I'm going pretty fast, and that's how I plan on doing it, so there's not going to be a whole lot of detail or anything like that. So what's called the next character being the Dwarf Shaman? He is also a silver right adventurer, as well as, like, the Archer, and he's also a comic relief, which you need. Seriously. He can fight, but he does mostly rely on his spells, not miracles, actual spells that do actual damage, not just protect people. Once again, not hating on support, but you need damage. He's not some BS character. He can actually use his stone crushing abilities to take on most of the characters in the show in a fight because his events of magic is nuts. The only thing that kind of sucks is he has a certain amount of spells he can use in a fight and like throughout the day, so that's going to limit him to not be as effective of an asset. So I'm not going to put him in A. I'm not going to put him in C. He's definitely not trash, so that leaves only the other likely tier being B. Next, we have Senior Lizard Man, another silver rank, but he should probably be higher. Noticing a pattern here? He's actually badass. Probably one of my favorite characters in the entire series. On top of his immense strength and combat abilities, he can actually buff himself to make him even stronger. I was gonna say like All Might when he goes from skinny All Might to like big strong buff boy, but it's not comparable because he's strong before he buffs himself. But that's besides the point. On top of all of those things, he can summon a companion to aid him as well, and it's this freaking awesome skeletal war beast looking thing and all of these things in tandem add to him being a vital asset and powerful individual to anybody that he comes across i don't know how the hell he's only a silver rank i guess because he hasn't done enough to prove himself to get promoted or anything like that but he's definitely going to a to start off these tier strong so let's hop into the Sword Maiden, the first gold rank for some reason, I guess because she defeated the Demon Lord in a party. So yes, she is quite voluptuous, if you could say that. She defeated a Demon Lord in a party. Cool. I just don't recall seeing her do anything. She's praised to this high regard, and she serves the god, and all this stuff, whatever. 
But she was defiled by some goblins. I'm just saying, man. Like, can't be that great. It's just... It's a, it's going to be a short and simple pick for me here. She's going in C with the priestess. Sorry, support Wyman. Like, I get you're necessary. I just... I really don't care. Sorry if that's a hot take, but it's my take. So, I'm going to move to the next man. The main man himself, Goblin Slayer. The protagonist of the entire series... He may be a silver rank, but that means nothing. Like, the man here to rid the entire world of goblins by himself if he has to. As far as combat goes, he's unparalleled. And no, I'm not biased. Any and all foes he has come across, he walks out victorious. He may get banged up a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not really sure how far the show goes into this. and I'm not going to get into all the feats and foes he does defeat. But he doesn't need magic to get into the A tier, which is exactly where I am going to be putting him because it's where he belongs. I get it only shows him attacking goblins, but I'm sure he could take out a number of individuals that are not goblins. He is very strategic. He's got a mindset for war, and he knows how people think. I get it. I know I said he knows how goblins think. Whatever. I'm sure he could apply that to any kind of combat situation and come out on top. His combat sense and pair with his cause for fighting makes him the perfect match for A as far as I'm concerned. Just real quick to get some people into the trash tier, I'm going to be putting Cowgirl along with Guild Girl both right in there because Guild Girl, yeah, she's cool. She wants to bang some, mob, some Goblin Slayer, you know, but she's invisible and she doesn't really do anything besides give quests to Goblin Slayer to further along the story. That's cool. Nazi, she's trash. Cowgirl is, like, quite amazing, perspective-wise, but she's going into trash as well. I'm not going to even explain it. I don't really think I have to. So... In retrospect of trying to figure out which one goes first in A, it's quite the challenge to me because I like Lizard, Re Lizard Priestess, man, quite a bit. And I also like Goblin Slayer quite a bit. Arc Bog, whatever you want to call them, Elven Names, Dwarven Names, all that stuff, Beard Cutter. I know it's probably going to be a hot take, but I think I'm going to give it to the Lizard Man. Like in a 1v1 fight, I'm pretty sure Lizard Man could take Goblin Slayer, like, easily. Like, I guess, I know he has... A certain amount of spells he can use but he's also a very proficient fighter so he doesn't need to rely on his spells but all he would really have to do is pop a friggin little summony boy and then get all buff that's two spells i'm pretty sure he still has one more after that and i don't think goblin slayer would even stand a chance like he would get demolished not trying to diss my boy goblin slayer but they're, they're both a rank but Goblin Slayer is going to follow short behind Lizard Priestess Man and his quirkiness and love of cheese. Yes, cheese. You don't need him to help you out. Get him a wheel of cheese and he'll be in love with you for the rest of the day. So obviously I left out some of the not so important characters like the seductive mage who is pretty awesome in her own right. And like the Spearman and all the other warriors in the guild. And I just, I didn't feel like it was all that necessary, really, to add them into the, uh, the tier maker. Oh yeah, obviously I used tier maker to make this tier maker. Yeah, awesome website. Go check them out. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they definitely feed a tier list. They're the ones to use. So... That's pretty much all I have as far as the strength ranking for these individuals. But if you haven't watched the series, go watch it and read it. It's phenomenal. The new movie is set to release in Japan, February 1st, 2020. It's called Goblin Slayer Goblin's Crown. And it's set out to be phenomenal. I'm pretty sure it takes place in one of my favorite arcs of the story, so I'm excited. And I'm sure you would be excited if you read it or watched it as well. That's pretty much all I have for today. If you liked the video, make sure to click that little like button and subscribe to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Until next time, I have been Crypto Anime.
One last thing real quick, the new Made in Abyss movie is coming out, so make sure to catch up on Made in Abyss.